Well, what can I say I've been lying to you in the last OAuth episode? Because you did the OAuth authentication flow, but then you just used the Stripe user ID instead of the OAuth specific access tokens and refresh tokens. Let's change our project to use these in this episode. All right, go back to the project and then uh, step inside the OAuth controller, go to the Stripe Connect method. That's the method from last episode where you basically handle Stripe's OAuth authentication flow response. That was a very long line. And then down here where you pass Stripe's response, the JSON response, you turn it into a map, put a breakpoint here where you fetch the Stripe user ID. Go to your browser, hit connect with Stripe, and the page hangs, that's our breakpoint. And when you go back to your project inside the debugger, you'll see, well, the map is here, and you get a Stripe user ID back, and you also get an access token and a refresh token back. Now, what's the problem with the stuff we did last episode? We uh, used the Stripe user ID, so we got that. And later on, when we try to fetch transactions, we specify the uh, Stripe user ID and our own API key. And that's perfectly valid, but it hasn't much to do with OAuth because OAuth wants you to use access tokens and refresh tokens. So let's find out what that means. First of all, let that run through. And in here, what you'll do is, let's say you create a new variable, access token equals string. And then, well, basically you can copy these lines here, access token. The same is true for the refresh token that you just saw. You can do the very same thing. Refresh token, right. And then you might want to create a field refresh token. You, so you store the refresh token and the access token in the class, right, like so. And let's also print them out to the console your access token and your refresh token. That's it. And later on, instead of using your own Stripe API key, let's try to use that access token, the user access token that we got from Stripe, and not specify the Stripe account or the Stripe user ID, just use the access token. And make sure you delete the options here as well, right? And then restart the application because we added a couple of fields and it takes a second to compile and boot up again. But all we did now is getting the access token, storing it in a field, and trying to call transactions with the access token. Okay, back to the browser. What you want to do is go to Locals 8080, click Connect with Stripe. Again, I forgot to delete the debug, but disable the debug point. Go back to the application, you see you successfully connected with Stripe, that's fine. And now let's see if hitting get latest three charges works. Ready? Bam. And you see all, or well, not all the transactions, but the last three transactions. That's what exactly what we wanted. And when you go back, you can see that, well, you don't use your own Stripe secret key anymore, but you're only using the access token you got back. Now, there's one more thing in here that's missing. And that's what could we use the refresh token for? Again, just to trigger the uh, breakpoint, I'll just reconnect with Stripe again. And when Stripe sends you back the access token, the thing is that usually access tokens are short-lived. That means they're only valid for like, say, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or whatever. And OAuth servers also send you not only the access token, but they only send you a field called expires in seconds. So there could be a field saying expires in 3,600 seconds, like in 10 minutes or whatever. And then you have to make sure that whenever you're using the access token, it's still valid. And if it's not valid anymore, you'll have to use the refresh token to get a new access token for yourself. So access tokens are short-lived and 
you basically want to keep the window very small that when an attacker gets your access token, uh, it expires anyway in five minutes and the attacker ca can't do much with it. So then you can just create new ones. And with Stripe, as I said, they never expire. You can make them expire. The client can make them expire when they disconnect from your Stripe account. But in any case, we want to try out rolling the access token by offering a new method, refresh. Let's do some quick and dirty copy and paste coding. Because what you want to do is have a new post method. You call it refresh. Well, the method refresh, it has no param, so you can trigger that from the website. You want to delete that. And then when you read the Stripe documentation, you'll see now you cannot send in the code, the authorization code, but you have to send in the refresh token, like so. Send in your client secret, that's fine. The ground type is also refresh token. And you pretty much get the same response back, the use ID, access token, refresh token. You just redirect to the same page, that's fine. And when you look at the index HTML page, I already prepared a button for you, the refresh button, like so. And there's also some JavaScript. When you click the refresh button, it will simply do a post call to slash refresh. That's the controller method you just built. And then alert when it was successful with a refresh token message. And that's pretty much it. All right, so let's restart the application. Clear the console. Go to your browser again. As you can see, there's a button, refresh access token, which will obviously throw an exception because after restarts, the refresh token is null. But anyway, connect with Stripe first. Again, the debug point. Okay, you successfully connect with Stripe. Just to double check, and there's a lot of switching back and forth. Stripe user ID, access token starts with SK test. Double O and YQ, and there's the refresh token. It's a long token. When you go back, uh, you can get the latest three charges if you want, right? And now hit refresh access token. You get a response back saying, well, that kind of worked. Let's have a look at our console. In the console, you see that the uh, that's our refresh call. The Stripe user ID hasn't changed. It's still the same but the access token has changed. So no double O anymore, no YQ, it's now YU and K7. And you have the same refresh token basically back. You got the same refresh token back in test mode and that's fine as well. Now, the final test is try getting latest three charges again. You cannot see it, that's a bit, that's a tiny problem because you will just see the same transactions here, but it actually also worked. You can try it out yourself when you check out the source code, play around with that as an exercise, and uh, maybe you want to make the refreshing here a bit more specific so you see a small loading indicator instead of just, you know, the same transactions popping in here. Great. So the main takeaway is while for Stripe specifically, you'll basically always use the access token and it has no time to expire. So you don't have to worry about refreshing the access token. But in any case, in most OAuth applications, you'll have to have, say, a batch job or some more complicated setup where you check, well, that's the access token. It expires in five minutes and you have to have something that runs in five minutes. So when the user tries to log into your application, which refreshes the access token so that the user isn't forced to log in again with Stripe or with GitHub or whatever, uh, and it all works seamlessly. Finally, refresh tokens can obviously also be revoked and expired, but again, in the Stripe use case, you don't have to worry about that. Good, that's enough for this episode. Great, we sorted out access tokens and refresh tokens, and now it's time to use the Spring OAuth library to see if it makes our lives easier, better, and happier. Let's get right after it.